Welcome everyone, this is Zahn with Repo Products. Today's video is on Autodesk Education Software and a quick how-to guide on how to take care of a few things. In our presentation, we'll take a look at how to access the site to download the software for standalone usage and for network-based usage. We'll also take a look at how to activate the Autodesk software should you need to reactivate it. And lastly, what happens when you have to renew your Autodesk software? So with that, let's jump into the website. So here I am in the Autodesk Education Home site. The easiest way to get to it is just to head over to a browser and type in autodesk.com forward slash education. It'll take you here. In order for you to access any free software, click free software. The page will change and it will list some of the most common applications that you might want to download to install and use. You can also click see all products and it will list all of them alphabetically. Now if you notice carefully, you do not see Autodesk Suites, which has been retired for a couple years now. And you also do not see Autodesk Collections, for example, AEC or Product. So. In order for you to obtain multiple software for your usage, you will have to click and download each individual product. So let's take a look at AutoCAD, for example. I click AutoCAD over here, and the page will change, and it will ask you to sign in. Since I've already signed in with my Autodesk account, then it's going to display Welcome Back and My Name. I can download the software right here as well, and they also give you recommendations for other software that you might want. So if I click download now, this portion will change, and it's going to ask you several questions. The first question is what version? And the reason they ask you this is because you may only need a particular version of software, say 15 or 16 for AutoCAD. Now, if you are in an education sector where you're doing a network-based installation or standalone installation and you need multiple versions of the software, you will have to do each one individually. Uh, if you are creating a network license file and you assume that you can create the network license file to handle the current release and three releases back, this will not work for education. Education's network license file does not have a package increment to handle three prior versions. So you will have to do each one individually to create individual network license files and combine them. We'll talk about this a little further down the video. So for now, I'm going to pick AutoCAD 2018. It'll ask you for the operating system, and it'll ask you for the language. Once you've done that, you will get a serial number and a product key and the size of the file to install, and you can install it up to two devices. This is for those who wish to install it as standalone. So let's take the example for a, diff a different piece of software so we can force the prompts to do network-based as well, so you can see this. I'll head over to free software, pick something I want, for example, say Revit. <clears throat> And then it'll ask me to sign in. So I'll sign in again. And now, here is where it asks you for the initial first time the license type. So here you have personal or individual use. You have school deploy with a network server, which is very, very common and typical. And the preferred approach and then school deploy without a network server. What's the difference between this one, the personal and individual use, versus the school deploy without a network server? And obviously, what does this one mean? So personal individual use is for you as a person to use on your individual machine and up to two other machines as well. School deploy with a network server is so that it generates a network license file for that particular piece of software and it can be used in a network environment with up to 3,000 users for that particular piece of software. School deploy without a network server 
basically allows you to use the software in a school environment, install it as standalone, good for three years, but not being deployed for 3,000 users. It's just on a particular machine for that duration and that amount. So since I've already done the personal individual use prior for AutoCAD, and you saw how to go through and download, for example, AutoCAD with standalone personal use, and it gave you the serial number and the product key, let's look at it from the network-based methodology. So I will click Deploy with Network Server. It'll ask you for the version. <clears throat> and again, unfortunately, since this is Autodesk Education, and I cannot create a package increment for all prior releases up to three back, I will have to do this four times if I want my network license file to contain Revit 2018, 17, 16, and 15 usage for the end users. <clears throat> now, most people will just download the latest software and be fine with it. But you have to be very careful because certain applications, for example, Revit, is version specific. Meaning, if I have an application project that I'm working on for Revit, and it's in 2016, then that project should hold in 2016 throughout the entire course of the construction of the project. If you accidentally have 17 or 18 installed on your machine and you open up the 2016 project, the file will temporarily be upgraded to 17 or 18 so that you can view it. If you make any changes and you hit save, that 2016 file will forever be that newer version. So for the purposes of downloading the software for education purposes for network-based, and you need multiple versions, you will have to do this four times potentially. So for now, for the video, I'm just going to use 2018. And then again, you specify the operating system and the language. <clears throat> and what ends up happening is, you get your serial number, you get the product key, and the ability to download the file um, for installation purposes. When this occurs, and you've chosen Deploy with Network Server, a network license file is automatically generated, and it is sent to you via the email address under your account. So if I open up my email, I should see under my Autodesk Repo products, I should see Revit 2018 education, multi-user, up to 3,000 seats, serial number and product key, okay? And the network license file will be sent to you as well. <clears throat> so here's that AutoCAD 18 as well that we, we initialized earlier, okay? So eventually you will get via email, it takes about 5-10 minutes, and you'll get the network license file and it'll be sent to you and it's a .lic file. Now, if I open up my Windows Explorer and show you the network license file, this is what it's going to look like. The name of the file can be anything you want it to be called, but it has to have a file extension of .lic. When you open it up, open up in Microsoft Notepad, a simple text editor and you'll see the name of the server, the MAC address, and all of the products that are included. Now, like I said earlier, you have to download for each piece of software, each version, and each time you do so, you'll get a network license file that contains just this data that's highlighted for each product. So you will have to append, meaning you have to grab this content from all the license files and copy paste down, all the way down, all the way down, and you'll get a whole bunch of this and when it's all said and done, you can see what it looks like. Um, you can test and check it by going to um, a website called licenseparser.com. And you can choose the file that you're looking for, that you've been receiving. And then you can click Submit License File. When you do so, <clears throat> you will end up getting this screencast. Now, I've blacked out this client's data because we don't need to see that. But it will tell you the name of the license file, the license type, the server name, the MAC address, the ports, and all of the software that that license file contains, all the versions, the number of seats that are maximum allowed for the university, which is 3,000, the serial numbers, 
the date it was issued, which is the date that we downloaded, we asked to download it, and then the expiration date, which is typically three years. Now, <clears throat> you have to basically, for all of your network-based installations like this, for all of the products, you will have to rinse and repeat for every single product and every single version. You will get quite a few network license files. You'll just have to copy paste all of them to a single master network license file. And then that license file can be used in the um, software. And it can be used in the installation and everything should function properly. Now what about if you have existing Autodesk Education software <clears throat> and it is expiring or it has already expired and you try to run the software and it says it needs to be reactivated. If that's the case, then typically what happens is you will get a request code that's generated and you will get an activation code as well that's automatically generated and sent to you. If I open up an image capture of a request code, this is what the request code will look like. <clears throat> It'll say request code for the product and the year and the serial number and the product key, and it'll be a series of digits. Once that request code is created by the software, the software should automatically send the request code information to Autodesk servers, and an activation code should be sent to you via email. This is for education um, sector, okay? When that occurs, You can take the activation code that was sent to you, and when you start the product up again, <clears throat> it'll give you the same window, and it'll ask you to activate it, and it'll give you the serial number, the product key, what product it is and version it is, and the request code. <clears throat> and then you will input in here, in each of the cells, the activation code. And it's going to be a series of numbers and letters, and the easiest, safest way to do is copy-paste each cell. Once you've done that and you click Next, it'll activate the software, finish the dialog box, and the software will function again. Since this is education purposes, the software should function and it should reactivate for three more years. Uh, I do know that at one time, Autodesk changed that policy to a one-year time frame, but I, they've gone back to the three-year now. So your software should function from a three-year perspective. Um, the last thing is what happens <clears throat> if you have to renew the software? Unfortunately, with Autodesk Education Sector, Autodesk Education says you cannot renew the software. You basically have to request new software and download the software again. You'll get a new serial number and a new product key for each of the products and their version years, and then you can go through that process again of downloading and installing. Now, what about uh, network-based installation, and that will involve two things, <clears throat> installing it on the server side and on the workstation side. You will have to install the network license management software for that specific OS, for example, Windows, and once you install it, then you can take the license file and configure everything so that it functions properly, okay? Uh, I just did a general Google search for this, and you can actually download and install the file yourself, the network license file, from within the Autodesk software application via Tools and Utilities and Network License Manager. Or you can just go to Google and type in uh, LM Tools latest version, and it will automatically take you to the Autodesk site for downloading for Windows. And you will always want to download and install the latest version. Most Windows servers are 64-bit, so you'll want to do this uh, NLM 11.14.1.3 uh, 64-bit. This is, by the way, brand new. The previous was 11.13.1.2, and this is brand new. And, and when I say brand new, I mean brand new as, is, as of this week, because last week when I did this, it was 11.13.1.2. So, any Autodesk software with uh, network-based installation, you will need to download this file and run it, and the software will install. Once it's installed, you can then take the license file and place it on the server and configure that. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, 
<clears throat> and you can do a search for network license files. And I do have a video on how to install it via network based. So head over to the playlist and look for all things installation 360 networking. And in this list, you will find um, one of them for how to install the network license file. Okay. And so you can use that as a guide as well to help you install from a network based installation. So for our purposes for this video today, we learned how to get to the Autodesk Education site. We learned how to download free software, whether it is standalone or network based. We learned that if you installed it via network based, that you have to download each individual software and each individual version year. And you will receive a network license file for each download that you request. You'll have to append those uh, license files into one master license file and then you can install and run the application. We also learned how to reactivate the software using the request code and the activation code. And then lastly we learned that with education software you cannot request to renew the software. You basically have to request to download the software again and it reinitializes the request, if you will, to obtain new software to use for three more years. If you have any questions or any comments regarding this video or need any assistance, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much for watching.